Good morning, church. It's about six o'clock. I've been up for two hours. Sometimes uh, we have obligations as pastors. Uh, we get up very early in the morning. Sometimes we just simply get up to pray. The Lord wakes us up for prayer. This morning we were scheduled to have a Zoom meeting uh, with the pastors in Uganda. Uh, but they're going through hardships right now. And of course they weren't able to have their meeting. Sometimes we have technical difficulties with the internet and the power uh, there. And we're not able to... Uh, to complete our meetings when we have them, but uh, there's pastors that's going through training there. Uh, we're, we're doing a pastoral training with them, and uh, God has blessed that effort and that ministry. But I just wanted to take a few minutes to stand before the camera. For the last hour, I've been sitting here praying in the sanctuary, and um, I felt like uh, I should say something. Uh, perhaps at the end of this we'll pray together. But there's so much going on. There's uh, talks of nuclear war with Russia. Uh, the United States uh, is talking about launching a, a nuclear missile. There's a lot of stuff going on politically, a lot of stuff that's just ab absolute stupidity, really, what's going on. Uh, what's going on with the, the mandates and the vaccinations and the stupidity of having to, well, you just need one more, you just need one more. Well, you know, after they get, have tw after you get 12, or what are, what are they going to say then? Uh, it's always the next one that's going to be the better one. It's the next one that's going to do it. And I've made jokes about it. In the next five years, we're going to have a lot of zombies walking around for everyone who submitted to every recommendation. We, we have that going on in the world. We have, um, we have things going on in our individual churches right now. As a pastor, I get phone calls, or and even my wife gets phone calls uh, from people who's not even in our church. And and they call for prayer. They call for assistance. They call for help. These are people who are part of other churches. Uh, not to mention that we have people in our own church that's going through issues. Uh, there's all kinds of illnesses, uh, not just COVID-related, but serious illnesses that are, uh, you know, life-threatening. And we have members that are battling it. They, they're they fighting it and they're winning. But it's still a, a something that they have to go through. And it's not easy. That's just the surface. Uh, there, there's other issues that's going on with uh, with this ministry and others. Uh, there's, there's issues and problems. And, um, fortunately... I don't, I don't, I don't want to say anything out loud, but fortunately, uh, we 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 are blessed on on some levels, uh, and, and we're grateful for that. We're we're grateful uh, to have the blessings that we have, but it doesn't uh, change the fact that. There's so many people who are hurting and struggling right now. There are ministries that are hurting and struggling right now. And it just feels like the devil has just completely been at our backs. It feels like the devil has, has come against us. It feels, well, which we know he is against us, but it feels like he's getting an edge. He's, he's, getting, he's getting under our fingernails and he's... He's uh, he's really getting to the best of us. You feel beat up right now? Family problems? You, some of you may be going through financial problems. Church problems? You feel perplexed? You feel like you just, just 
you're about ready to just say, forget it. You feel that way. Well, as I was praying in the sanctuary this morning, there were scriptures that came to my mind. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We know this. It says, we don't wrestle. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Boy, does it feel dark right now. We have our hope, the light of hope that's in us. We know Jesus. We know He's there. We know He's there for us, but it still feels dark. It feels so dark right now. When we look at the politics in the country, we, we look at everything going on with the, with the church. You know, I was reading some of the... Uh, uh, the I was researching and reading some of the books where they're getting this critical race theory from. And what was the other one? I think it's intersectionality. And um, the darkness that's behind all this. It's, it's, just, it's just evident that the, the devil has got a hold and these, these powers, this, this, this darkness is just so overwhelming. The, the spiritual forces, it's coming against the church. Coming against the church. It's, it's very evident that we're getting near the end. It's so evident. If, if, if you can't see the handwriting on the wall, then I can't help you. We see it. It's, it's, it's in everything. But what have we been told in 1 Peter 5, 8? Be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. That devil is in everything. Sad to say he's even in some of the churches around here. And he's prowling. And he's looking. And he, his intent is to steal, kill, and to destroy. We know that. But notice what was said by the Apostle John. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. As hard as things are getting right now, it is time. It is time for us to increase our faith. We must increase our faith. How do you increase your faith? Well, it all starts with getting out your Bible and studying more. The more you know, the more you arm yourself with the more you know, the more confident you are. When you can quote the word and understand the word and teach the word, then you minister to yourself. We need to study more. We need to be getting on our, our knees and praying more. We need to be doing what we can to encourage others. That's what this is about, increasing your faith. And as God gets us through one battle at a time, as one thing slaps us down, as one thing discourages us, and we're able to successfully go through each one, one at a time, then our faith, just like a muscle, gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And what did John say there? Our victory is the fact that we have faith. That's our victory. Our victory is in our faith. That's what he said. And we know the things that help us to do that. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 13, take up the whole armor of God. 
We talked about that in Bible study this week. A lot of people don't realize that in Isaiah chapter 59, it speaks of um, the Messiah, the one who would deliver Israel and the one who would deliver the world. He would have a helmet of salvation. He would have a breastplate of righteousness. Well, that's the same verbiage. It's in Ephesians where Paul told us that those are part of the things that we have to put on. Well, to put on the armor of God basically means we're putting on Christ. And that's what helps us. That's what gives us a foundation. That's what gives us what we need in order to continue to move, in, in, in order to exist. And it's not easy. When you're when when we, we have uh, brothers in Africa right now who are financially strapped, and it's not easy. They're searching for money. They know Christmas is coming. They're searching for money. They're uh, they're they're searching for things for just basics. It's not easy. But what did the Lord tell us? If you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Matthew six thirty three. What did He say? all the other things would be added to you. What things? Prosperity, wealth? No. If you look at the context of Matthew chapter 6, what did the context talk about? Food, clothing, and shelter. He'll make sure you have something to eat. He'll make sure you have something to shelter you with. And he'll make sure you have what you need to cover yourself. He'll make sure of that. He said he would not leave us. He said he would not forsake us. It may not always be what we want. But it will always be what we need. And we look forward to that day of glory when we'll get everything we want. He'll open up his hand and he'll satisfy our every living desire. That's not talking about now. That's talking about in that glorious life that we have been promised. It's not easy. It's it's not easy going through what we go through. It's 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 not easy. I, I, I know there's people struggling right now. They're struggling with demons. They're struggling with finances. They're struggling with with uh, their I, I know of an individual right now who's going through a health issue. It hurts. It's paining. Uh he they've been given bad news. And this is a young individual who right now, their future looks bleak. And it's, 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 it's hurtful. It, 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 there's a lot of questions. God, why do you... People, we get so upset and we ask God, God, why, 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 why? But if you really want to know the truth of the matter, because of what Adam and did, Adam did, We should be saying, why not? This is part of the curse that, has, that, got, that, that man basically put on himself because of disobedience of God. The state that we see our country in today is, I would say, a curse because of man's disobedience of God. You want to take God out of your schools. You want to take God out of your court systems. You want to take God out of everything. Then when everything begins to fall apart, and you say, well, God, why? And the answer is because you took me out. You took me out of everything. God's not going to force himself on your life. He's not just going to force himself into blessing you and protecting you and watching over you. He's not going to force himself as, as one of the pastors here uh, likes to say, God is a gentleman. He's not going to do that. He's not going to force himself. So when everything just falls apart and our lives just begin to fall apart and we're refusing to submit to God, we're refusing to, 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 to listen to God and to obey God, and we don't understand why God won't do this, why God won't fix it. Why don't you prove yourself? 
Listen, God's already proven himself. We need to prove to him that we have gotten ourselves where we need to be. We need to prove to him that we love him. We need to prove to him that we're willing to act in what we say we believe. And that's where a lot of it comes down to. You know, a lot of people are easy to be obedient to God and they're, they're easy to, to, to try to do the, uh, you know, the God thing when, when they're blessed, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that. I got a pocket full of money and I've got this and my good, good health and everything's just, 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 just wonderful. They, 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 they have this mentality, but then when the season changes, well, God has forsaken me. I'm, I can't do it. I can't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't feel like it. I, I don't. Or you get the other, the opposite approach of some people only when they're in that dark season are they seeking God. And then when they get the light, when they get the, the blessing, oh, well, I don't have time. I've got other things to do. It can work either way. The point is we need to be faithful and strong in God in favorable season and unfavorable season. And even when we don't have money, even when we are uh, in, in, in ill health, even when we feel like the world is caving in around us, we need to take all that God has given us and muster up the strength and the boldness to press and still do the Lord's work still do what we've been called to do if we're ministers. If We've all, regardless, been called to faithfulness and obedience. And that's what we should be trying to attain, a life of, of faithfulness. Godly devotion should be our aim, regardless of the season, regardless of the circumstance. And so that's, that's what we're going through. Notice what Paul said. Here's another scripture that came with 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapon of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power. Notice this here it says, To destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to do what? To obey Christ. I think it's interesting when it's talking about fighting a warfare and it's talking about destroying arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Whoa! Isn't that what we have? You have critics, scientists, educated, I call them educated fools, educated people who are standing, uh, they're standing for, uh, against, you could say, they're standing against Christianity and everything it represents and what it's about. Claiming that there is no God. Claiming that we are, you know, we are our own. We, you know, we, we are who we are and we don't have to submit to anything higher. Every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. Christians are radical. They're, they're, they, they're ignorant. They don't, they're so unwise. They, they don't believe in science. And science is smarter than God. Well, it says here, we destroy those arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God. And it says here, we take every thought captive to obey Christ. You know, we hear all this negativity and it starts playing with our mind. But because we're waging a warfare and because we're seeking God for the strength to get through that, we're able to take all those negative thoughts 
and we hold them captive. It's only my Jesus, your Jesus, that's going to get us through this. Whatever you're going through, whatever negativity you are experiencing, whatever attack that you are under right now, it's only Jesus that's going to get you through it. It's only Jesus that has, I can do all things. By who? By Christ who does what? Who empowers me? Who gives me strength? That's what Paul said. And that is the truth of the matter. Turn to Jesus. Focus your eyes and attention on Jesus. He's going get, to get these churches through their battles. He's going to get you through your financial issues. He's going to get you through it all. And you can't be looking to man. You can't look to man to be your source of strength. You can't look to man to be your provider. You can't look to man for these things. can't look to the, to the government for these things. No. We put all our faith and confidence in Him. He will see you through. He'll get you through it. He will help you through it. And that's where we have to put our confidence and faith in. I think it would be appropriate that we say a prayer. If you're going through something, if you're hurting, if there's something that you're going through right now, I want you to look. Extend your hands out. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray that, that this prayer is going to reach every soul that needs to hear it. And I'm praying that, that in some way uh, the, the Spirit's going to begin to move in your situation and move in your life and move in what you're going through. And you're going to be able to overcome it. In fact, you're going to see victory. You're going to see success. You're going to see, you're going to see a change. And it's not because there's some kind of hocus pocus going on. It's because you have focused your eyes on Jesus. And now he's going to bless your effort. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you lift every burden. For anybody who's hearing this, whatever that burden is, if it's a health problem, if it's a family problem, if it's a financial problem, if it's a church problem, if it's a pastor problem, whatever this, this pain, whatever this, 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 this issue is, if it's a temptation that's nagging, if it's if it's the devil coming against us with overpowering us with depression or negative thoughts, whatever it may be in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, Father, that you put your spirit in this, that you increase our faith, that we'd look to you, Father, and we see in a different dimension what you're doing. Yes, we can't may see it in the physical. We can't see it because we got so many things right now overwhelming us, Father. But I'm praying, Father, that you're going to give us spiritual eyes to see what you are working out in our behalf. And I know, Father, that you're going to bless our efforts because we know that you are a mighty God who is able. You can just speak something and it comes into existence. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that if there's somebody out there who's seeking you, who needs a healing with their health problem, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Father, that you put your virtue healing upon them. I pray, Father, if there's somebody right now who's going through family problems with their, with their children, uh, with, with, their, with, their, with their parents, with the, whether it's a marital issue, whatever it may be, if, the, if there's a child out there right now who's being abused and crying out to you, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, you'll send your angels. You'll, sing, you'll send protection. You will send what they need to overcome and to get out of that dangerous situation. But, Father, whatever problems are going on in the family life right now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you, as the, as, as the creator of, of the family, 
that you will put your spirit in it and change it. Make it for the better, Father. I pray in Jesus' name that if there's some people right now, anybody out there who's, who's feeling something that doesn't feel right in their church, they come to your house to worship you, but there's problems, there's issues. There might be sin in the camp, as the expression goes. I'm praying right now that you will uncover it. I'm praying right now in Jesus' name that if there's leaders that need to be corrected, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you do it. I pray right now, Father, that you put your correction upon it. And I pray even that over my own ministry, Father, here. We, we are not immune to the snares of this old fallen world. So I pray that you protect this ministry, Father, that you correct us where we need to be corrected and that you keep us fast, steadfast in the truth. Father, I lift up uh, all the financial issues of uh, brothers around the world. Some of our brothers, Father, are really going through hardships that are that, that we can't even imagine. Some have have a lack of food, lack of, of, of finances. Some are struggling, Father. And I pray, Father, that you will be the, the ram in the bush, that you will make that miraculous provision, even if it's like the manna, if it just falls out of heaven, however you need to do it, Father. I pray that you supply the need of those who are seeking you and who love you and who are called by your name. Father, we need so much help. We sound like a broken record sometimes, Father. We sit here and whine, and we sit here and we cry, and we, we humbly come before you, and we, we're always asking for this, asking for that. And we do need you, Father. We, we come before you like this because we know that the only way that we get what we have and the only way we can sustain what we have is through your hand. And we acknowledge that. But Father, we can't end this, pray, this prayer without giving you some praise and thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for saving us when we needed to be saved. We thank you, Father, for your love and giving your Son. We thank you, Father, for being there when we didn't have anybody else. We thank you, Father, for your tender compassions and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for the times when we were sick. Even I this week, Father. I went to the doctor and they told me I had a kidney stone. But by your grace, Father, I don't have that pain. And I haven't passed us kidney stone. I thank you, Father. I thank you for what you did. I thank you for moving in me. But Father, there's others out there right now who's seeking you for the same thing. And I'm praying, Father, that they're going to, to seek you and you're going to answer. I thank you. I thank you for, for being the hearer of prayer. You could have delegated it to another angel, but you didn't. You didn't. You kept that for yourself. And your word says you are the hearer of prayer because you care about us. You, you, you love us. And we're so grateful to have your love and your care and your mercy and your grace in our lives. We praise you for being the God that you are. We praise you for being Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. All these wonderful things that you are and do, we praise you for it. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it, Father. Bless us, Lord. Help us to be obedient. Help us to, to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And help us to be who you want us to be. It's about you. It's not about us. It's about you. So help us, Lord. Father, I just pray that those who needed to hear this heard it. 
And I pray, Father, that as we conclude this prayer, that you will speak loud and clearly to everyone who is now seeking you, who is in great need and longing, Father, for some type of comfort or, or support. We love you, we thank you, we glorify you, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. So, in conclusion, let me read one final scripture. John chapter 8, verse 32. Very, very common scripture, very familiar scripture. But it means a lot. It says, and you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. If you need freedom. Freedom in your health. Freedom in your finances. Freedom in your, your walk. Freedom from temptation. Freedom from all kinds of financial family troubles. You need freedom. Seek the truth. Know the truth. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. They recognize his voice. And when they hear his voice, what do they do? They follow. They follow him. Center yourself around truth. A truth church. Reading the word of truth. When you're watching TV programs that maybe some of them are of religious nature, center yourself around those who are speaking truth. Not a feel-good message. Not a, you need more esteem, let me raise your esteem message. The voice of truth. Seek it. Listen to it. And it is the truth that sets us free. I'm going to continue to pray for you. And I ask, continue to pray for me. God bless you.